everybody. It's that time of the week again, bitch. <sighs> I love this show. It is, yes, another exciting episode of Old School, New School Comedy Podcast. And I am your shit-talking host, Christy Miller. And uh, with me this week in the studio is a good friend of mine. I actually met him through my other buddy, Eric Marino. He's been doing stand-up for, it was like 14 years, is 14. that right? 14. And uh, he has an album out that came out a few years ago called Shame, Pain, and Love. Because if you say it too fast, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds like, you know, he was complaining. Champagne and, and love. So I have to say it really slow. Shame, pain, and love. So, right, because it, it's not, it, sound, it really does sound like an right. R&B album, It does, right? totally. Yeah. And then uh, he just finished recording his special, Nothing to Nobody, which is uh, premiering soon. We'll find out all that information. But first, let me introduce you to stand-up comic, good friend of mine, runs a show in Brooklyn Heights every week called The Punching Bag. And uh, his name is Damon Millard. Hey, I'm Damon Millard. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Damon. Hi, Quinley. Thanks for having me. <laughs> good to see you. Canceled. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it was, a good, it was a good run. It was. Uh, now we'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> You know how relieving that would be to just oh. get canceled and not have to do this? I, I told someone before, I said, you know, when I released my album, it's on iTunes, Apple, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon Music, wherever you stream. Like my shameless was playing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I had a bit about Roe versus Wade, and mm -hmm. I clipped the part about why women my age shouldn't have babies, even though we still can, doesn't mean we should. Yeah. And it's really caught and i thought oh this is gonna get me canceled yeah. this is gonna get my album out there people are gonna share it like what a piece of shit is she i only got like five thousand views it got a bunch of shares but it got you're so cool you're so honest that is the realest shit we ever heard we love you and i'm like god damn it i can't even get canceled right? <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, damn it yeah. <laughs> Damn you, Shane Gillis. <laughs> yeah. Give me your power. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the rule of the universe. Whatever yeah. you want to have. Relax. <laughs> Damon's crossing his arms. He's well, like, You were talking about having a baby at your age and and, mm. and you know, it's that time of the month, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I still get it. Yeah, that's Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Haters. <laughs> <laughs> Where you, I thought you'd be out of eggs by now, right? Dude, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what I just you? go to the store every month. <laughs> you know how expensive eggs are nowadays? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they used to be ninety nine cents a dozen. No, my eggs aren't frozen, they're just fucking powdered. <laughs> I'd love just to add th sperm <laughs> not even <laughs> the sperm's like <sighs> the sperm would come out of cokehead <laughs> snorting all that powder <laughs> Yo, this is some good shit man <laughs> let's get that old pussy egg <laughs> what happened to us <laughs> i don't know so damon yeah hi <laughs> hi <laughs> so uh you've been doing stand-up 14 years now 14 and yeah. uh where did you start stand-up I started in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's what I consider my home scene, even though I'm uh, I'm an upstate guy. I'm a New York, upstate New York guy. Yeah, nobody claims that. No, nobody. Nobody sure. that, like, their eyes aren't glued together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, that their gene pool is a shallow doughboy. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, no one claims it. So where are you from? Tell everybody where. Uh, I'm from Binghamton, New York. Woo! Yeah! 607. Uh, <laughs> You know what that use that in a sentence. Well, I fucked six or seven of my cousins last <laughs> like, night. It was oh, a good time. That's solid. <laughs> right? Yeah. Thank you. I'm here all week. <laughs> six, <I'm> really... <laughs> six or seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm from there. I use jokes like that when I play white trash places like that. <laughs> I think I got one for you. Do you? I'll, yeah, I'll book you after this. Oh, perfect. Let's do it. I yeah, love yeah, yeah. trash. You know, I'm Oscar the Grouch in comedy. I love garbage. Oh, you're going to love this place then. I got, I got one. Let's go. All right, let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, so you're from Binghamton, and Binghamton. your hometown is like, so what, how did you end up in Milwaukee? It's a really long story, but I, I used to work in TV news. Um, okay as a photojournalist okay. and uh, so I was working in my hometown mm -hmm. and uh, then I got a job in Tulsa, Oklahoma doing the same thing. Tulsa! <laughs> Tulsa. So I spent a year and a half in Tulsa and then 
uh, got another job in Milwaukee. So I was wow. traveling the country doing just TV news. Because every time oh, you that's cool. every time you go to a bigger city, mm -hmm. um, the pay goes up of and and uh, just the quality of the news coverage is better. And then the, yeah, because they got normal people. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> Not get you start... Cletus rolled his fucking <laughs> Ford F one fifty and fucked this sister yeah, yeah. in the back. That's and they what, was at eleven. <laughs> that's what it was like in Bloomington <laughs> when I did. Uh, when I did news in Binghamton, oh, the you stuff, did not do news in Binghamton. I did. That's amazing. Yeah, okay, I, give us some news. Give us some news. Um, okay. <laughs> What's know, a typical news story in Binghamton? Just like you know, like daycare workers fucking their kids, and like. Um, uh, Look at the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Good night, yeah. people. That's my show. <laughs> just, I mean, just insane small town stuff. You know, like what was the craziest story you had to cover in Binghamton, New York? Uh, you know, I, I t there's so many. <laughs> I, there is a lot. I have a bad memory from alcoholism, though, too. Yeah. And and also just like uh, repressed memories from yeah. Like oh, blocking. trauma. Trauma. So yeah. it's really hard for me, especially in this business. Really hard for me to like go back into those early memories. Oh I'm yeah, like, mine are blocked. So. Mine are like blocked off, and I. It, they're definitely misremembered too. And sure, because your brain's trying to process yeah. the trauma. But like, you know, like if, if a if a truck got stuck under an overpass, that would be like <laughs> the main news story for the whole weekend. You know what I mean? <laughs> truck, an eleven foot truck tried to go under a ten and a half foot overpass. You know what I mean? And like that, that would be like our, our main story. That and would be like on this hold my beer segment. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah. got an eleven footer trying to squeeze in a ten and I a think, halfer. I think one of the funniest stories I ever covered was uh, I had a friend named Peanut, and uh, of course you did. It's yeah, Binghamton, Binghamton people. And uh, he actually he got caught with like pounds and pounds of weed, right? He was sure. like moving weed from like the city to yeah. upstate and then selling it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to be, I was the photographer that went to the, <laughs> the, sheriff's, the sheriff's press oh, conference and I had to videotape his weed and his, uh, oh, and his money. You know what I mean? Amazing. Yeah, so like, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was like really funny. Oh. And, uh, Hey, I know this guy. Don't he'll let us in. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Use me. I'll knock. Let me knock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was that, and uh, you know, it, it was all small town crap. Um, and then from there, I went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then okay. it became slightly bigger town, but more redneck crap. Sure. Even though Binghamton has its own redneck, so a lot of people don't know. Binghamton has its own, like, like that's like, uh, did you ever see the, the original version of The Hills Have Eyes? The, the Australian what, one? No, the the the, uh, the George Kennedy, the 70s one. I really didn't, know. Okay, it's one of the greatest movies ever made. If you're into like 70s B-horror flicks. I will definitely check it out. George Kennedy and uh, who are the other people in it? Oh, I can't Kennedy. remember, but it was called, you know, and then they remade it in uh, like the 90s. They remade it. And I, I didn't see it because I was very upset. By it. Yeah, <laughs> like, you were don't mad. Fuck with the classics. Yeah, yeah. Like cheesy. You're classics. a curmudgeon when it you're comes to that stuff. My, yeah, you're yeah. fucking up my B movie classics. Like, don't, don't I, try to spread peanut butter on dog shit. It's I will. Not, <laughs> you know, it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like, this was like a part of like New Mexico where the car broke down. And, yeah. And there was these mountain oh, people. Yeah. That's Binghamton. Yeah, that, that's that's what <laughs> special I'm, kind of people that don't. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to explain. It's like, if you don't have, like some people make the mistake, regular people make the mistake of like, oh, let's get off at this exit and fill up. <laughs> and you are fucked. Last time I was, <laughs> last time I was home with my girlfriend who was a normal person. Yeah, she is. I love her, by the she's way. She's great. She just texted to say, Aww. to tell you that she loves you. I love you, Zazana. So we went to this uh, gas station, like mini mart in my old neighborhood. Right. And they will not let more than one person in the store after 8 p.m. And the, and the guy behind the counter has to come and let you in. That's how dangerous my old neighborhood is. That's amazing. Yeah, she took a picture of it. I should, I'll send it to you. Please. So that you can put that it in, so like, in the description of the- Because there's civilization, and you have white people, and you have black people, and you got Latins, and you got Asian, you got all this stuff, but up there you got white people. Yeah, yeah, that's Like it exactly. starts with an H. Like they flip the W and the H and they're white. White people. White people. We no, are white it's, people. It's, it is scary up yeah. there because I, there's How something that happens. Well, I'll get to, Something happens to you when you remove hope. 
When there is no hope, you fucking, you revolt against everything. Like, against your own shit. So, like, everything there is, it's, it's like Bosnia, dude. It's war-torn. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, the only thing keeping Binghamton afloat is the fact that they have that really good university there. And so, there's this so influx crazy. of Long Island Jewish money that comes in right. from parents every semester, yep. and that's what keeps this place from just literally they starving to death. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite sorry, I forgot about Binghamton University. Like, yeah, I actually went school. there. Wow. This goes back to how I escaped. So, okay. I escaped um, because I learned to read, and um, that got me out. A lot of people skip True. that. <laughs> <part>. <laughs> they totally skipped the first. 10 grades. <laughs> yeah, and so well, a lot of people can't wait to just quit school. Like, that's a lot of people's dreams. I can't yeah. wait till I'm 16 and I don't have to do this. And, uh, God. I, yeah, and so I, I went to community college there, okay. and then and then I, I did really good, um, and then I did really well <laughs> in school. <laughs> you ain't from around here, is you? <laughs> and uh, so I transferred into the university, which is really hard to get into. It's really hard. But I did have that, I did have that, like... Binghamton that, edge? Yeah, that edge <laughs> of, we gotta let one of these tarts in here, yeah. you know what I mean? We got, this one looks promising. <laughs> yeah, so I got in basically on that, because I didn't really have the background to get into Binghamton University. Like, it, it, it really is a top school yeah. somehow. You know what I mean? Hey, we, you don't have the, the gene pool or mm -hmm. the, what, what's the other thing they call like the, uh, not the credentials, but it's something like the, the pedigree. The pedigree. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I wasn't a legacy. Nope. <laughs> in fact, I was the first person in my family to go to college. So anyway, I went there. And the there. last. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's our show. <laughs> uh, and so I, I went there and I went to cinema. Uh, I went to the cinema school there. Okay. And it wasn't. It was Binghamton. weird. It was weird. It was like, it wasn't like learn how to make a movie. It was like learn how to make weird art films. And so that's what I did. I watched a Yoko Ono film, which is butts going, clenching butts for 30 minutes. And then it just cut to another butt and it'd be another like two minutes of this butt going like this. And then it, it would cut to another butt. And it was a 30 minute movie. And that, those are the things I had to watch and then write a paper about it. You know what I mean? And like, Anyway, so I did that. Well, it was Yoko Ono, so it kind of means something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there was another movie that was really good. It was called uh, Zoom by somebody Snow. I forget. Maybe it was Michael Snow. Immaterial. It, the movie is a 35-minute... It's a, it's a room, and it just slowly zooms in for 35 minutes into a picture on the back wall. <laughs> That's the whole movie. Like, uh, this, this course is... How high can you get yeah, yeah. and film a film? <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't Dude. smoke weed, but then you, you have to write the paper, so you're like, I need to... You I need know? to see their vision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so I graduated from there and, with a cinema degree, okay. and, then, and then I waited tables in my hometown with a, with a degree, doing nothing with my life, really. You know, like, uh, cucking some old guy and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> that's about it, you know? Uh, and then, uh, and then I, I, I actually lost that job. Like I got fired, and I was, so I went to the local. Uh, <laughs> I went to the. Is there just, a train that just went by? The yeah, what oh, was that? It'll be it'll be edited out. Don't worry. Okay. And then I went to uh, then I just went to the local TV station because I knew a guy who worked up there, and he was like, "Yeah, I think they're hiring a photographer right now." So I went up there, and oh, this is a good story too. Okay. Um, so I go there and I, I, I uh, apply for a photojournalist job and I had uh, my tape from film school, which is okay. all weird stuff. Like the videos I showed them were like Prozac pills spinning and, oh and like, and like there's like, you know, just close up of boiling water and that cuts to like a fucking, like, like a crying infant and like, it's just like just weird, weird films, right? And this is what I showed them to get a job in TV news. And the guy was like, well, I could tell you know how to edit and shoot, you know. <laughs> we do the more basic stuff here. And I was not like, yeah, that, no, I know. We're not so train spotting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was we're very... more like spotting trains. <laughs> yeah, it was all avant-garde shit. And um, so then he was like, he was like, uh, yeah, we, we could probably use you. Just, uh, I need you to give me your, uh, 
DM because you're gonna be driving a lot for this job because you gotta drive to the news story. Right. And he was like, uh, just bring me your um, DMV abstract, which is basically um, like like a record of every accident you've ever been sure. in, any speeding tickets you've ever gotten. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a license. Oh my god. So I got it because I, I did have a, a, a learner permit at okay, the time. Okay. Okay. I had a learner permit at the time. So I got the abstract and I showed it to him. And he's just sitting there scratching his head. He's like, Some, something here doesn't make sense. And he's like, do you have a license? And I was like, no, you caught me. Oh, and I forgot to put this little detail in. I was wearing fake glasses to make me look smarter. So <laughs> I borrowed my friend's glasses that are prescription and oh, I can't no. see anything. Oh, so I'm, I'm in this interview and uh, I'm wearing these glasses that like bottle, like Coke bottle glasses that make my eyes look like little pin drops. Yeah. And, um, and, and then he's telling me this and uh, he's like, so I basically got caught lying about having a license at the interview, and he still gave me a shot. He was like, I'll tell you what, if you can get your license by October, you can still have the job. And I was like, oh my God, thank you. So I went and I I found the, the I searched the whole state database and I found the place close, like they had the earliest um, appointment mm -hmm. to get a license. Mm -hmm. And I drove to Goshen, which is closer to New York City. It's right. like a two hour drive. Right. So I went down there and I barely passed the test, but I did. But you did, so I that's did. all that matters. And that got me in. That got me into TV news. Wow. And then uh, I really loved TV news for like like I got good at it. You can be you can be a good uh, videographer. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people aren't because there's like no point in it at some right. point. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. You might be able to sense the difference, but most people watching don't care. They're just they listening don't care. for They're the just info. Just listen to the info, yeah. Yeah, and then so, but I got, I got pretty good at it. And there's a an, an organization called the NPPA, the National Press Photographers Association. Mm -hmm. They teach certain basics and principles to mm -hmm. how to shoot and edit. Um, <laughs> You know how to shoot and edit certain stories, and I and I got really good in the in those principles. You know what I mean. And so, uh, when I put together a, a demo reel, I sent that off to that place in Tulsa, mm -hmm. and they brought me down there. Nice. And then I started shooting different kinds of news stories, news stories like like malnourished horses and stuff like Aww, that. Poor and, babies. Yeah. And then you ended up in Milwaukee. And then Milwaukee was the next uh, jump in TV news where. Um, malnourished horses in the snow you know what I mean? like, <laughs> drinking beer yeah drinking beer <laughs> Laverne and Shirley yeah. back to you <laughs> yeah a lot of Packers stories oh yeah, yeah well there's a Packers watch party at this bar <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lady gets mad because the Packers lose and kills her husband you know what I mean? things like that T and takes out the whole town <laughs> yeah 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 and, at 11. well shit and in the long okay and now I'm about to answer your first question mm -hmm. um so while I'm there yeah I had gotten the bug to do stand-up. Okay. Uh, I was always really funny at parties. Like people would. Were you though? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, people told me. I don't know. <laughs> Liar! No, I'm just right. kidding. If I could go back and remember any of those Jeez. parties, right? I probably wouldn't. You'd have think a whole so. new hour of material. <laughs> oh, probably. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I would like tell stories, and people would like gather around and like listen to me tell these stories, and I would just be roasting constantly. Right. Because um, we in. In Binghamton, we did a thing called ranking, which is roasting, but like on the fly. Like, like we were pure lovers of it. We weren't doing it for TV credits. We were right. just like, well, again, making fun of people, oh, like yeah. hurting each other's feelings nonstop. Yeah. And like, what would happen is you would say something off color to somebody, and somebody would be like, oh, are you guys ranking? And then like it would turn into like a fucking live roast. Oh, I love No it. cameras, nothing. Right. And I had a friend, Katie, who was like, the best she's made grown men cry we love her <laughs> yeah yeah dude she was a beast right and uh so this was like in my blood my my uncle was a great storyteller i mean all of his stories ended up with him in prison but it, they were good like you knew where it was gonna end <laughs> up but like how we got the there. journey yeah was, the journey's everything the journey was what how many was. different paths he took yeah. to go to prison <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so no matter how the story started it always ended up with him going there 
of prison. His name was Choo Choo Charlie, by the way. Of course it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> so Choo Choo Charlie had a fucking like a plethora of stories that I would sample from mm -hmm. in, in, at my parties when I would tell sure. stories. And uh, there was this kid. Uh, he was another photojournalist, Jim Dow. I still I still remember his name because he was like, "You got to do stand up, bud. You got to do stand up." And that was like deeply like stuck in there, right? right? And I was mm -hmm. like, maybe I am good at something. Yeah. And um, so then I was trying to steal my gr my uh, cousin's girlfriend, and uh, I thought, because I love stand up comics, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought doing stand up was cool. Right. And I didn't realize no one else thought it was cool. Yeah, right. So I was bragging to this girl about doing stand up, even though I hadn't done it yet. Guys will say anything. I will. Yo, I was trying so hard. And the hard. fact that you you're a stand up comic, you, that's the lowest of I the I know. Low. <laughs> I know. Like if I knew, you should have said astronaut, TV I could have said anything else. You could have said you know lead singer, Van Halen. You no. could have said anything. <laughs> I didn't think. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought that maybe she had the same admiration. <laughs> I, I was I was blinded. It was romantic to me. You know what I mean? Right. Like traveling the country just talking about yourself like, yeah i don't know you know and then there was all the greats from from back then that i loved you know what i mean martin mm -hmm. lawrence and shit like that oh, like yeah. these were my boys and uh like i loved them and uh so i thought it was like something to brag about so sure. i lied to her and uh it didn't work <laughs> i kissed her once and then my cousin still hates me to this day uh but uh Don't never fight over pussy guys yeah, guys rule of thumb no pussy's worth fighting over. There's plenty more out there. Seriously, it's not. Yeah. There's not, if it doesn't pay your bills or ha, you know the golden arches or open up the pearly gates or yeah. cure cancer, don't fight over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did too. Did you know I went to jail because I hit a guy in the face with a bottle over my daughter's mom? Yep, I did it. I failed. I'm surprised that's. The, I, I'm surprised I broke that rule. I'm surprised that's the only thing you've done. No, it's not <laughs> being the only thing. <laughs> no, but that that gave me my Binghamton uh, credentials. Yo, you yeah. got your street cred. I got my street cred on that one. You ain't from Binghamton until you go to jail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to jail for that, and uh, oh, that's a family tradition. It is too. Yeah, Aww, I know. Oh, that's so sweet. You're a legacy in jail. Yeah, I got my stripes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not in my... university, but in jail, you're right. a legacy. <laughs> Finally got my, I am a little <laughs> Oh, my lord's here. <laughs> Choo Choo Charlie just left, you know? Hey, I love your hey, uncle. Hey, you just missed your uncle. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Well, we ain't going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See you in mess hall or whatever it's called. Yeah. In GP. I don't know. I'm bad. So then, remember the girl I told you about, Katie, who was like yes. the best ranker? Right. Like she would just destroy you. Like I right. hated it. I've, I've beat her up a couple times in the rank but she will get you in the end. Right. She's just she, like, she's she was clever and she saw it and she was like, she was always calling you a smoke. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> she'd be like, she'd find that one thing that you were like insecure about. Oh yeah. And as soon as she brushed on it, she knew she got it. And oh, then yeah. she just digged and digged and digged until <laughs> she got you. And uh, so sadly she was killed by her boyfriend. Oh my God. I know, terrible um, fucking, yeah, it still hurts. And. Uh, and I came back here on uh Were they uh, ranking and he got mad? And <laughs> he probably <laughs> did. I would not be surprised if that what got her killed. Actually, that would be they should put a statue up of her Dude, if you got killed yes. over but, roasting somebody so hard. Yeah, your your boyfriend so hard he killed you. Yeah. I really don't know what it was about. That's um so sad. It, yeah, and it took a long time for them to get justice on this guy too. Like uh, they, they didn't prove it for like over a year, so he was like out free, uh, not, not truly out free, like out ducking people, because you know how big. Yeah, because of you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Everybody's related. Yeah, everybody share the same, you know. Yeah, that guy, that guy was out like wearing like fake mustaches and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look, his asshole with a fake mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fool you, me. You'd get beat up if you just looked like this guy. Yeah. Yeah. His name was Frank, and like. It was, Hey, you kind of look like Frank. Well, oh, not though. Frank. <laughs> well, Frank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm back home. Mm -hmm. I'm going to her funeral. That that lie was floating out there with uh, Cindy, mm -hmm. uh, my cousin's girlfriend mm -hmm. at the time, and uh, the idea of life being short and what was keeping me from actually doing stand up. Mm -hmm. All of those things. All of those things were like in this weird soup of anxiety and depression and um, 
just like uh, existentialism and, and, and seeing my one of my best friends in a coffin and I was like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. So two weeks later, with about a minute of quasi like structural jokes and eight minutes of rambling, I went and I did an open mic at a place called the Miramar Theater in Milwaukee. Okay. Cost you two dollars and you got a CD, a recorded CD of, of your the set. worst set of your life. <laughs> the worst set of your life. I don't. That's I worth two bucks though. I dude. have the second. Do you? I have the second uh, set I've ever done on CD oh, somewhere. That's it's gonna be horrible. That should be like a B side to your next album. Yeah, it should. Like a bonus track. And yeah. Like people download can pay extra and get the bonus track. Yeah. That shit. Like the I, first, this is my first time doing stand up or whatever it is, yeah. however you want to word it. But that's, yeah. that's a bonus it, track, bro. It's funny you bring that up because at the end of the credits of my new special, mm-hmm. I do have a, I do have a, like a, a clip from 2011. It was like one of the earliest videos I could find mm-hmm. where I do this, where I do this sh- shitty joke <laughs> with like a terrible looking camera and the audio is shitty. Um, but I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm no, just gonna plug perfect. this in on what the end. What a perfect thing, because it's like a whole full circle. Yeah, yeah, that's cause, great. Because uh, the special was shot in Milwaukee right. as a homecoming right. of sorts. You know what I mean? Right, I like, remember that. And because uh, I was like, um, this was like my debutante ball. You know what yeah. I mean? I feel like I finally arrived. Yeah, yeah I had that comedy uh, album come out in 2016. And I've done a lot of stuff that I'm proud of, like, uh, but, like, I'm I'm finally here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 14 years in, and with this specific material, it's all gelled in a way that I'm like, I'm like, there. Like, I I think I feel like I belong in the club. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I belong with the people I respect, the people yeah. I've always looked up to doing stand up. I feel like I can hang. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I was on the same bill as them, yeah. I wouldn't be worried that they're watching me anymore. Yeah. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it's it, that is around the 15 year mark when yeah. you feel that. Like I always tell people, you know, around the 10 year mark is when you find your voice. Yeah. You spent 10 years developing it, finding, trying shit, trying yeah. different things, and and then you know because it's like I always say, stand up is like a baby you give birth to. So at 10, at 10 years old, you kind of have a conscience now. Kids know right from wrong. They they're pretty independent. They can make their own decisions. They can let themselves in and out of the house like latchkey kids. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they're just my childhood. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Talk about trash. Yeah. Hi everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, garbage day garbage. right here. Yeah. <laughs> Oscar the Grouch left me. Yeah. And <laughs> my mom would always leave expecting to be back in time for us to get out of school. Sure. But she never did start drinking and not right. come home and sure. I'd have to like break windows or yeah. find different ways into the home. Break in your house. Yeah. I had to do that before yeah. where the key wasn't under the mat. Yeah, yeah. Like if one of the other kids Straight got trash. home. Yeah. Yeah. When I went to, like if my brother came home or before me mm-hmm. and the key wasn't under the mat because he'd take it inside and leave it and then mm-hmm. leave or whatever or right. lock the door and I'm like climbing the fences, <laughs> getting in the climbing windows. Right. I never broke anything but I knew how to open up windows and climb in them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was that was my way of getting in, but uh, yeah, oh yeah, those old days. And uh, um, what were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's like the, just like the whole oh yeah, coming. yeah, coming. Yeah, so like like I was like oh yeah, the the point of view voice. So the yeah. ten years. So at that point, and now that you're you're approaching fifteen, like you're yeah. in your fourteenth year, approaching fifteen. You are at that level where you've had four or five years to write for that voice you spent ten years developing. Right. So now you got good footing. Yeah. You know, so now you can roll. You know what I mean? Like it's usually around 14, 15 years is when I see people do that shift to the next level. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, and then you can actually even go back because like a lot of comics will say like they'll try something out of mic three or four times if it don't work they throw it out. I never did that. I just put it off to the side until I had writer's block and I'd work on it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And so now that I am experienced, I'm going back to jokes I've written early, early on. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, here's the problem with this joke. And like, I'm taking 15 years of experience yep. onto a viewpoint of a year in yeah. and I'm able to like unlock it and fix it. And, and now that I can use that joke or at least that subject matter or maybe, maybe a line well, I wrote well, that Well, now worked. you're older, you're more experienced, you have more experience in, in stand-up. So you have all this trifecta of aging, 
living yeah. and stand up under your belt. So now you could take those old premises yeah. and it won't be from that one year stance anymore. Right. And exactly. won't be from that point of view. Like you yeah. won't be looking at it anymore. You'll see where you were and then you go, yeah, but nowadays I can take this uh, same idea and now I can develop this shit yeah. out of it because I didn't have this experience back then or even the life experience to do that. Right. Yeah. As has this ever happened to you? You ever oh, take yeah. a joke that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm a comic. It's happened yeah, to me. It's yes. happened. Um, you take a bit that you put on the shelf, mm -hmm. and just like maybe in the middle of a show, you just reach up into your brain, and for some reason, that's what comes out, yeah. and now it works. You didn't yeah. change anything, but like all of a sudden, you just you're saying it with your whole chest or something or well it's also it's you're saying it with your experience yeah yeah that's what you're saying it's just like what we're talking about yeah. you it's an old bit that you've had stored up in the files in the brain mm -hmm. and you pull it out and you do it but you're doing it from a 15 year experience yeah yeah you're doing it from how old are you now in age 46 no in dog years asshole <laughs> in age <laughs> in regular age yeah yeah well I didn't want, and I'm not sure I wanted to give that up but yeah oh, for, I'm 46 okay so but I'm saying you're a 46 year old man mm -hmm. who has all in your in your 40s you really become start to become a man then when you yeah. turn 50 things change like your, your brain shifts to a whole new level like yeah. you unlock this level in the video game but in your 40s you're pretty settled you know who the fuck you are now you're not a 20 year old kid anymore so taking that old bit in your 40s is going to sound different and better and it's going to work because you spent all that time developing your voice. So yeah. now your voice knows how to say it. You know, and then and people talk about the voice like a lot. And mm -hmm. it wasn't until recently, just like off the top of my head, I was like talking to like some younger comics uh -huh. that I, I kind of brushed against what maybe it really means. And it's like when you do stand up, you have to do this like... Um, self evaluation mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. and you have to analyze your thoughts in a way that like people from my hometown don't do they work at the factory they don't fucking investigate why that made them feel that way they don't live they exist right like but for me like in order to develop material and to like go in into certain things like i have to be like why did why did that situation mess me up so much and then you start doing like this like self check-in right yeah. and then and and it, it does make and I think like that's why comics like yeah. are more well-rounded people because they like you have to do that in order to do material <laughs> you know we're getting like yeah 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 uh, but yeah, yeah. No, but you have to do a checklist like, you, like yeah. why did that because you know even just in life in yeah. general that's called growth and maturity right but you if know? you and so you're breaking down why did why was i so upset over that and yeah. then you could do the check and that's beautiful yeah and you don't have to do that in normal life like a lot of people skip that whole step in regular life like my mom gets angry like if she's in a long line at a grocery store, right? And yeah. all she does is because just Because that's get not why angry. she's angry. Right, that's it's not why she's it's angry. Because it's underlying layers right. that she has But she would, she would never dive in and be no. like, I gotta figure out what's wrong with me. Okay, what's really bothering me? Because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Like I always tell people my checklist in life is, does it pay my rent? Does it put food on my table, clothes on my back, or eat my pussy? No. Yeah. So if it doesn't hit that checklist, it doesn't matter yeah. to me. There's no power in my life. Right, yeah. But people like your mom or people that live in small towns or just, just exist and just go to work, come yeah, home, yeah. go to work, come home, do that stuff, they're not looking at the whys right. of life. They're just going, what? Like, what about the Why me? Right. They're doing a why me, not just a why am I reacting? Why is this happening? Why do I keep putting myself in the same situation? Because they don't look at the whys. They just go... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so sad. Yeah. So um, yeah, because we are here at the comic strip, so there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's, a, there's a little bit of background activity. So it's when, like background action, like we're like we're the principals and yeah. the background actors are doing their thing to look like yeah. a real scene. <laughs> yeah, except in a movie, they're quiet. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. Oh, speaking of. Okay. So uh, my girlfriend. Right, mm -hmm. Zuzana, 
she, you know, she's from uh, a Polish descent. Yes. She speaks Polish. Yes. And she's an actor. Mm -hmm. And so she's been getting these, she's been getting these uh, gigs lately. She's been get, uh, getting these gigs lately where she voices the background. Of, so when, when, a, when a, a, a scene is shot for a movie, the background is completely quiet, unlike at the comic strip. Um, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Right. Because Remy so, told them that there's right. a podcast going on, but they don't care. They it's don't fine. seem to it's care. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. But Ooh. later on, they record the background sound. Oh, wow. And they use, they use real actors, okay. real SAG actors, mm -hmm. to like put in the voices later. And so she's been, and because of her uh, ability to uh, speak Polish, mm -hmm. she's gotten, she's been doing this uh, Holocaust one. But they've been recording it at home. She's got some. She's got a really good microphone and all this stuff. But she's had to yell at the top of her lungs in our apartment. Oh my god! She's like, kill those fucking Jews! Kill them! They're pigs! Oh my god! I hate these fucking Jews! Not now! <laughs> so like, if you're walking by the hallway of oh, our apartment no. on a weekday, oh, and I'm you dead. just and you just I'm happen dead. to hear you have just happen to hear Hell Hitler. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> we're not having a meeting in there. She's just like recording audio for a, a film or something. <laughs> She's an actress. Yeah. She's, she's pretending she's, to hate him. Yeah, she's pretending. <laughs> Quote, unquote. It's so cool to be fake. <laughs> like, this yeah. is a SAG deal, honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that was That's something. hilarious. Oh, uh, yeah. That's really funny. I love it. I love Zuzana. She's great. So, from Milwaukee, what brought you to New York? Oh, man. Okay, so... I became the resident host of Milwaukee's Comedy Cafe. It was okay. a cool little club, but right. they were like really stuck in booking headliners from the 80s well into the 2000s. Yeah, you know that, what I mean? that was a, when was that, back the 90s? Well, I started in the early 2000s, like, I started 2009, and so I was probably, I was probably passed and the resident host there probably in 2010, mm -hmm. and um, you know, so that's when I would work. I worked with this guy. I don't want to say his name because he's probably still alive. Alive and <laughs> maybe not though. He was rough, dude. Um, there was uh, he. He was like one of the first headliners I featured for. Right. And uh, but he he was a real he was a real mess. But he's he had his bits locked in from like 1984. You know what right. I mean? All the all the. You can say the name. We don't care here. Yeah, it was Scott Papacuri. Oh. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> said no one ever <laughs> yeah 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 and uh so but i remember i went over to the comedy condo because mm -hmm. i was a local and i was featuring mm -hmm. i didn't have to stay in the condo and uh, i went over there right it's eight in the morning he said he was nervous about my material and wanted to talk to me oh my god so i went over there I, he called me up at eight in the morning to go over there so i fucking you know it was my first like feature weekend right right, and, right. Uh, so i go over there and uh i come in and he's got like this paper plate with all these thin, like pin joints that he had rolled into like the the wrapping paper that's out on the outside of a um, t toilet paper roll. He's oh got like 50 God. of these tiny little pins here. And he goes, you want one? I go, I go, no, Scott, it's, a, it's too early for that for me. And he's like, yeah, you're right, it is too early. And he puts that off to the side and then he takes another paper plate that has a bunch of Coke on it. And he just does two big lines. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the '80s. Right, and then he's and then he's walking around the condo, right? And I go, yeah, this place is pretty nice. I've never stayed here. And he goes, yeah, this is classy, man. I could see like Bon Jovi staying in a place like this. <laughs> bon Jovi is his like definition of class. You know what I mean? And um, oh, shot to the heart, and you're to blame. Yeah, and uh, I forgot where I was going with that. But oh, oh, so I was I got doing to New York. this. Yeah, yeah. So I was doing that, and I was meeting a lot of headliners, and headliners would take me on the road, and I was like. You know, I was ripping through my paid time off at work, and I was like, I'm ready to fucking quit my day job. And I was in love with this girl at the time who was mm -hmm. like a travel nurse. And what she would do is she would get in a, like a three-month assignment in, in a city, and then she'd move on to the next city three for three months, and then you'd stay there for three months. And so we went to Dallas. For, I quit my job, uh -huh. idiotically. 
because I ripped through my savings oh so my fast, and oh I was I had no money. I actually took a job at um, Starbucks for a little bit. Oh my god! <laughs> After being like a, a top photojournalist oh in the country, and then and then I was doing um, latte. Uh, yeah, yeah, getting in fights with like like soccer moms and shit. But yeah. um, and uh, so. <laughs> Uh, I did, I quit, because I was like, I was getting all these gigs that I couldn't take from these headliners. They were like offering me shit. Right. So I quit and I went with her to Dallas and then I realized I made a mistake because the reason I was getting all those gigs is because I was like based, I yeah. had a base yep. and I was taking these com comics to their next gig and they would let me either like MC your feature for the next gig right. and like those gigs kind of dried up and then I'm in this Dallas comedy scene which I didn't like. Yeah. I mean, I didn't like it there. Yeah. Uh, everybody was like trying to kiss ass to the hyena, like yeah. clubs yeah, yeah, yeah. and shit. Like yeah. everybody was, everybody, it was the only place I ever went to where you, everybody did the same exact five minutes every yeah. single place they went because they were hoping to like develop that into an MC gig. Yeah. I'm like, oh. It's sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's sad. <laughs> uh, it makes Binghamton look like Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah. So, so we came, then our second jump was here to New York City. Yeah, yeah, uh, we were uh, in New York City, mm -hmm. and um, and then I kind of fell in love with it. Like, this is the Mecca, and it's mm -hmm. where I always wanted to be. Right. And long story short, it fell apart with her, and, and uh, you know, things progressed, and I, I had things going on here, so after a while, I just made this, like... You made it your home. My home. And now yeah, you're here. Yeah. And I've been here since 2013. Wow. So, See, yeah. look at that. Look Ten at that. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Big shot. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love you for being on here. I okay. always wrap up the show with two questions. All right. So the first question is, is there a bit a comic has done that made you go, God damn it, that's brilliant. I wish I had written that. I mean, yes and yeah, absolutely. We all have them. I have a list. I mean, there, I, I, should, <laughs> I should actually write it down. And I thought about doing that after you sure. sent me this in the text but mm -hmm. um the bit that louis does about of course but do you know that one yeah it's like it's like kids need to be these kids with peanut allergies need to be protected you know of course they do we need to make sure we don't take peanuts in a school but you know but if we just turn a blind eye for like one generation <laughs> We'll never have to do that again. <laughs> I think that's just like insanely good. You yeah, know what it's I mean? just so it's so simple. It's funny, and that's those are the best jokes that are yeah. right there in front of your face that, that someone catches before you do, and you go, "God damn it, I should have solved it." Yeah, and then of course, uh, my favorite bit of all time, I think, is that I couldn't have written, but just for entertainment purposes, is. Uh, Bill Burr's uh, muffins bit. Oh, anything. Yeah, he's brilliant. I mean, it's just his story and the way he tells it, and mm -hmm. like, and I was like, that's how you tell a story. Though. Yeah, that's how you tell a joke story. Yes. You know what I mean? It's just like one punchline after punch. another. Punch. Yeah, yep. yeah. It's all punches. And, but it, but the story's and moving forward at the right pace, yep, and it's, it's, it's building, and it's you know, it's it's brilliant. It's, yeah. it's a whole. It's it's a whole. Uh, yeah, you're it's like a formula. that's that's yeah. the that is the top. You know, yeah. like that is the top of the game. Like yeah. there's you know. Maybe 50 years from now, that the game will have changed. But that's how you do. Like yeah, that is it. But that that's is comedy. Comedy is comedy. You can't. You can. You can change it with TikTok and all the other <laughs> yeah. dumb shit and yeah. try to alter it. But it's still comedy. You can't. You can't yeah, let yeah. go of that. The, the roots of it. Yeah, yeah. But um, so my other question is because uh, I did open for Paul Mooney for 12 years. Yeah. That he would always end his shows on street jokes and then he would Mooneyize them. Oh yeah. Yeah. He would make them hit and, it, and he would just murder. Yeah. The room. And it's like when Mooney would start doing street jokes, I'm like, all right, he's wrapping up. Good, we can get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, but what is your go to street joke? Because we all love him. I just heard this one. So, okay. you know, I'm a bartender now. Yes. And yes. so, uh, I get, I get this old guy, his name's Larry, he comes in. He's probably like late 70s, but he, he tells me a lot of them. Uh, I have a clean one and a dirty one. Which one do you want? Sure. Are they quick? Yeah, sure. Do it. Do okay. Them. Do both. Whatever. All right, here's the clean one. Okay. Uh, the clean one is uh, guy goes to the doctor. Right, and uh, he had to take some tests, right? And the mm -hmm. guy goes, hey, I got, the doctor's like, hey, I got some really bad news for you. Um, you. You got dementia. He goes, oh no. And he goes, and he goes, and I got, I got some other bad news for you. You're, you're diabetic, right? And he goes, oh man, at least, at least, at least I don't have that dementia, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's I wasn't good. diabetic. I <laughs> choked in the moment. Right, I I know. Know. It's, okay. it's something else that's really bad. Right. <laughs>
Um, and the second one is another, the guy goes to the doctor, right? And he goes, Doc, man, uh, my penis fell off. And he goes, what? I don't believe you, right? And he goes, let me see. And the guy pats his uh, shirt pocket. And he, he pulls out a cigar and he goes, he goes, that's not, that's not a penis, that's your cigar. And he goes, oh no, I smoked my cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you are hilarious. Right. I love you to pieces. And yeah, now yeah. tell everybody in the social media world where they can find you at, and, if, and, and plug any shows or your special coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Millard Comedy, M-I-L-L-A-R-D and the word comedy. Uh, that's, that's everything. And, okay. Um, the new special is nothing to nobody and it's actually it's in the selling stage right now but okay. i did get an offer for it so it will be yeah 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 so i'm having a meeting thursday and there's another per party that seems interested too so i might get my choice which would be at crazy you. yeah so it'll be available for streaming somewhere and then the audio version will also come out and that'll be on everything as well perfect yeah. i love it yeah nothing to nobody and uh look out for it everybody it's going to be great and damon's hilarious and i work with him on the regular he's great yeah and also don't forget to follow us here at old school new school comedy on on the, the instagrams and don't forget to like subscribe and share our show <laughs> we love you yeah. see you next week bitch.